Hello, this is Brother Kimball. The purpose of this video is to help students understand how costs flow through the work and process ledger account. I have found that when students try to complete the application problem 2, that they don't understand how the work and process account works. Let me just talk that through for just a second, and then I'll have you uh, do this problem and show you how to solve or at least show you the solution. So the work and process account is an asset account. That means when we have more of this asset account, we'll record left-handed entries, known as debits. And when we complete inventory, when we complete these jobs in process, we will record a right-handed entry and push those costs out. It'll be called the cost of goods manufactured. And that amount will go in as a left-handed entry to finish goods. So when you finish jobs, you will credit work and process representing the cost of these goods manufactured and you'll debit finished goods. And so then what's le whatever is left over will be your ending balance. So in your beginning balance you're going to have some direct materials costs in there, some direct labor costs in there, and manufacturing overhead applied costs in there. Then during the period you're going to add direct materials, add direct la labor, and you're going to apply more overhead based on these new costs that you've added. And all of that are the costs that were in process during the period that are available to be completed. When you complete them, you're going to transfer out the cost of the goods manufactured, which means you'll transfer out some direct materials costs, direct labor costs, and manufacturing over, overhead applied costs. What's left over will be in your ending balance, and this represents the unfinished jobs. This is a mathematical computation. Start with something, add some more, take some out, What's left over is your ending balance, and that ending balance will be made up of some direct materials costs, some direct labor costs, and the manufacturing overhead applied costs. So with that as your background, I give you some information letting you know that the predetermined overhead rate is 250% of direct materials costs. That means for any one of these uh, manufacturing overhead amounts, all you have to do is go to your direct materials costs and multiply by 250%, which is in your calculator 2.5, and you'll arrive at the manufacturing overhead amount related to those direct materials. So if I added $100,000 of direct materials during this period, then the overhead to be applied during this period would be $250,000. If I transferred out $1,000 of direct materials during the period, then the overhead transferred out would be $2,500 because it's $1,000 of direct materials cost multiplied by the predetermined overhead rate of 250%, so that would be 2,500. And that's how all of these work. So what I would recommend you do is you um, maybe print this out and put in all the known information. So beginning work and process, put that $10 right here for uh, direct materials beginning balance and direct labor $15 put here. And then you'll have to compute what the overhead applied is based on the direct materials and the predetermined rate. And so put in all these known pieces of information into either the beginning balance or added during the period or the ending balance. And these pieces you will have to solve for using the concept of take your beginning direct materials, for example, add the direct materials added during the period, take away what you still have, and the difference must be the direct materials that was transferred out to finished goods. With that in mind, uh, I, would, I would recommend you just stop the video now and uh, work on this problem. It should only take you about five minutes, but it'll do wonders for you in the application problem tomorrow. So I'm going to let you stop, and then I'll continue in just a second. So please stop the video. Okay, assuming you've stopped the video and you've worked this out, you've done it on paper, what you'll see in green here is all the known information from up above. So then what I would do is I then have to go through and solve for how much overhead was applied on the beginning balance. Well, I take my $10 of direct material beginning balance multiplied by the predetermined overhead rate, 250%, and I would get manufacturing overhead beginning balance of 25. Do the same thing for the uh, manufacturing cost added. I see that I added $200 in direct materials and $320 in direct labor. And therefore, how much overhead should be applied during this period? Take 
times 250% and you get $500. Now do the same thing in your ending balance. If I'm told that the unfinished job has $50 of direct materials in it and $70 of direct labor in it, then I can solve for how much overhead should have been applied in this ending balance, which is leftover overhead from all this stuff. Right? We had some overhead, we added some more, we took some out. What's left over has to be this number, which is $50 of direct materials cost times 250%, and that is 125. Now, use this hint, and you say, oh, okay. If I want to know how much direct materials was transferred out to finished goods, what I could do is I could say, well, how much direct materials did I start with? Add some more, so I'm up to 210. Take out what I still have, 50. And I'm left with direct materials that was transferred out to finished goods of 160. Same concept with direct labor. I started with 15. I add 325, so I'm up to 335. I take out 70, and I'm left with 265 that must have been transferred out, direct labor costs that were transferred out. Now, if I want to know how much manufacturing overhead was transferred out, I can do it actually one of two ways. I can take the direct material cost of $160, multiply by the predetermined overhead rate, and I would get the answer. Or I could also use this hint. Take the beginning manufacturing overhead, which was 25, add to it the manufacturing overhead applied during the period, which is 500, so I'm up to 525, take away the ending manufacturing overhead, which is 125, and that puts us down to 400, and that is the correct answer, which is also the same as 160 times 2.5, which 2.5 mathematically represents 250%. So that's how you solve this, and I find that some students don't understand. If I give you what the ending balance is, it is what it is. Now, it's based on the math of beginning balance, additions, minus subtractions. But if I tell you this ending balance, that's the number. And you've got to work off of this given information. Okay? I hope this helps. Good luck.